This is your 2024 NFL mock draft. This will be pick one through 33. So it'll be the full first round, but also including the first, second round pick as well with the Carolina Panthers. So let's go on. Let's stop wasting time with the first overall pick. I have the Chicago Bears selecting Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC. The last time I made a mock draft, Justin Fields was on the roster, and I still had them going with Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this draft class, and the Chicago Bears have to get this right. They passed up one Patrick Mahomes a couple of years ago to get Mr. Trubisky. You have a guy in Caleb Williams. A lot of people comparing to Patrick Mahomes. I don't see that. I see more of a refined Russell Wilson, but I believe that you're getting the next best quarterback in the NFL for years to come. They went out and they also loaded up the roster as well with guys like Keenan Allen. You got DJ Moore and last year's trade when you trade the first overall pick to the Carolina Panthers. So you're building a true contending team in that division. If Caleb Williams can be that major rock star quarterback, this could easily be one of the best teams in that division for years to come. You also drafted Darnell Wright in the first round of last year's draft class as well. You continue to build up that offense and you're building up that defense as well because you trade the second round pick to get Montez Sweat. And that's something to add in as well. They have two first round picks. They don't have a second round pick in this draft. With the second overall pick, the Washington Commanders are a bit of a weird situation. You either go Jaden Daniels or Drake May. You have Cliff Kingsbury being the brand new offensive coordinator. You have to get the quarterback with this pick. Because the last time I made a mock draft, Sam Howe was still in the roster. He is no longer with the roster. He is now with the Seattle Seahawks. I have no selecting Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is a prolific runner, amazing dual threat quarterback, and I think that he's the best dual threat quarterback in this draft class. A lot of people would say that he's the best quarterback in this draft class. In other draft class, he would be the best quarterback hands down. But you have Caleb Williams, who is on another planet. Jaden Daniels, phenomenal runner. Inside and outside the pocket, prolific. You could compare him to Lamar Jackson. I think that he's more of a refined RG3. And the Washington Commanders are getting their next best quarterback with this pick. And you need a quarterback that can go out there and be a dual threat, especially playing behind that bad offensive line. They did make some moves in the offseason to revamp the offensive line, but you still would benefit from having a franchise quarterback that can do both things inside and outside the pocket and can run around and make some key plays. With the third overall pick, the New England Patriots, they can go back, they can trade back, they can make some moves like that to adjust the roster to their liking. But I believe Drake May is too good to pass up with this pick. A lot of analysts, they're down on Drake May right now because of the footwork. Drake May, this season, did not have the best numbers. But the NFL talent left the team. He is still a top quarterback coming out of college. And the New England Patriots, they need a quarterback. I know that you have Jacoby Brissett. And he's a solid backup quarterback to have. But go out there, select Drake May, let him sit down if you're worried about his development. And then you can build around him in the next couple of years. But you have to go Drake May with this spot right here. I don't see the Pacers trading out and just going away from Drake May. And if Jaden Daniels is not the second overall pick, they will go with Jaden Daniels as well from all the reports that are coming out right now. With the fourth overall pick, the Arizona the Cardinals could trade this pick. But they need wide receiving help in the worst way. Go out there and get your next Larry Fitzgerald and Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr., very good wide receiver. Has zero holes in his game. Just a solid, good, safe pick to have. And he's a guy that can develop into being one of the best wide receivers in the game as well. He may not have the speed of guys like Brian Thomas Jr. or Malik Neighbors, but he doesn't need that. A great route runner, great hands, smooth, and you continue to build around Kyler Murray, giving him a fighting chance. You have him, James Conner, and he drafted Paris Johnson Jr., in last year's draft class as well in the first round. They could trade out of this spot, but one thing you want to take note of, they have two first-round picks this year. So they have a first-round pick right here, and they have one later in the draft as well, and I'll get to that later in the video. But I have them selected Marvin Harrison Jr. with this pick. This is the only trade in this mock draft. I usually do not do trades, but with the fifth overall pick, I have the Los Angeles Chargers trading back with the Minnesota Vikings. And I have the Minnesota Vikings selecting J.J. McCarthy, quarterback from Michigan. They need to go out there and they need to get quarterback help. You do have Sam Dornell, but he's not going to be the guy for the next three to four years with this team. He could have that Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield arc, sure. But it's safer to go out there and get J.J. McCarthy. Now, to me, J.J. McCarthy is a late first round quarterback, early second round quarterback. But the thing is here, you have all those weapons in Minnesota. Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, two very good tackles as well. And you have Sam Darnold, who could be a very good bridge quarterback. You don't have to start J.J. McCarthy on day one. Go out there, 
have Sam Darnold start a couple of games to start the entire year, then you slide J.J. into that role. You lost Kirk Cousins. He was an older quarterback coming off the torn Achilles. You now give Kevin O'Connell his guy for the next couple of years, and hopefully it can pan out. But I would really like to see the Minnesota Vikings draft J.J. McCarthy or go out there and get Drake May and let those guys sit and develop, similar to what Jordan Love did behind Aaron Rodgers a couple of years ago. With the sixth overall pick, the New York Giants, they need offensive help. You now have Devin Singletary at the running back position. He's no Saquon Barkley. Daniel Jones will be on this roster for this upcoming season no matter what because if you cut him, that's a nasty cap hit. I know a lot of Giant fans, they'll love to see a quarterback go in this spot, but you need wide receiving help, baby. You really do. Darius Slayton has been the best wide receiver on this team for the last three to four years. And Darius Slayton is not a bad wide receiver, but everyone knows he's not a true number one. I have them selecting Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU, explosive playmaker. And the last player that they took out of LSU that was a wide receiver was Odell Beckham Jr. And he was pretty legit. This kid has great hands, can get open in the open field, can get behind cornerbacks and safeties, and he can open up the game plan for everyone else as well. You can get a quarterback in next year's draft class, but continue to load up this offense and get some explosive production immediately from Malik Neighbors. With the seventh overall pick, the Tennessee Titans, you need offensive line help. They have had a great phrase in my opinion. You went out there, you got Calvin Ridley, so you don't need to go wide receiver in this spot. You also have DeAndre Hopkins as well. Traylon Burks is still a question mark, so the wide receiving room is starting to look better. Then you also bring in Lord Cushenberry at the center spot, so you don't need an interior offensive lineman. Then you also brought in Tony Pollard as well. They could come in and help you in a receiving game, but he is known to be a prolific running back with his speed. And you also have Tajay Spears as well. Go out there and get Joe Alt. I have them selecting Joe Alt, tackle from Notre Dame. This is a no-brainer. One of the worst offensive lines in the NFL from last season. You go out there, give Will Leffers a fighting chance with all those playmakers, and you give him some help up front immediately. With the eighth overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons, they signed Kirk Cousins. The last couple of years, they selected Kyle Pitts in the first round, Drake London, and B. John Robinson. They need defensive help. And as a defensive guy, the first seven picks in this mock draft have all been offensive players. So with the eighth overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. It's a no-brainer. They need edge rushing help. They did not resign Bud Dupree just yet. They did not resign Calais Campbell. They need to go out there and get a true edge rusher that can go out there and put pressure on the quarterback. You have a very good defense in the secondary. Jesse Bates is one of the best safeties in the NFL. You can say that he is the best safety in the NFL. And A.J. Terrell is a very good cornerback and the same with Clark Phillips the third as well. They need edge rushing help. He can come in immediately and he can be that Will Anderson type of pass rusher with this team. You're getting a steal right here. This is what happened when quarterbacks and offensive players go early in the draft you start to see some of the best defensive players slide down in the draft we see it every single year with the ninth overall pick this is the second pick in the first round with Chicago Bears they did go out there and they made a trade to go get Keenan Allen you could say they could go Romo Dunze with this spot and they can do that because Keenan Allen is getting older but you can get your wide receiver in the third or fourth or fifth round with how good the wide receivers are in this class I can easily see the Chicago Bears going out there and selecting Brendan Rice in the third round with this pick beef up those trenches you got Caleb Williams with the first overall pick you have Darnell Wright from last year's draft class with the tackle spot I have them selecting Olu Fashanu tackle from Penn State phenomenal tackle great road raider is an awesome pass protector as well you can make the case that he's the best tackle in this class but I believe Joe Alt is a little bit great it's a little bit better and he's more pro ready right now you have Darnell Wright who was solid his rookie season last season he will get better and look like a superstar for the last four to five games you have Olu Fashanu as well you book in your two tackles you have a very good running back in DeAndre Swift and you have those weapons around Kayla Williams if that kid can be the guy this is the great pick right here for the Chicago Bears with the 10th overall pick the New York Jets did go out there and they addressed some needs in free agency you traded to go get Morgan Moses you have Tyron Smith now two very good solid tackles the problem is neither one of those guys can stay healthy more so in Tyron Smith than Morgan Moses so they can go offensive line with this spot you also went out and you signed Mike Williams as well they need more receiving help but you have a very good tight end on the board this is all in. You're pushing your chips all in with the Jets. You have Brees Hall as well, phenomenal running back. Go out there, get Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams some help as well. Go get Brock Bowers with the 10th overall pick. This could be of a bit of a controversial pick because they need offensive line help. The defense should not be touched at all. Their defense is amazing. 
going out there and getting Aaron Rodgers another weapon that can just go out there and just help them score points would be amazing, especially with that defense. And this is an all-in move with the Jets. You're getting a generational tight end as well with this pick. With the 11th overall pick, so the Los Angeles Chargers now have this pick because they traded with the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings would be in this spot because they made a trade with the Houston Texans to get two first-round picks. So just to update you guys on that. So this is the Chargers pick now. I have them selecting Romo Dunze, wide receiver from Washington. This is a phenomenal pickup. You traded Keenan Allen. You cut Mike Williams. Your best wide receiver right now is Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson can develop to the next level. He was a first-round pick in last year's draft class from TCU. This is an ideal fit for the Los Angeles Chargers. You trade back and you still get a key wide receiver that can go out there and help out Justin Herbert. And it's a no-brainer for them to go out there and get some more wide receiving help as well. With the 12th overall pick, the Denver Broncos. Now look, there is no way in hell that Sean Payton is going to go out there with Jared Stidham being a starting quarterback for this upcoming season. This is a bit of a reach for me, but I have them selecting Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon. I'm not the biggest Bo Nix guy. I think that he's a second round pick in my opinion, but some people love Bo Nix, but he fits the system of Sean Payton, a guy that's going to go out there, take what the defense gives him, and is an amazing system quarterback off of what he did in Oregon. Was not the best quarterback in Auburn, but when he went to Oregon, he looked very good. He can go into a system with the Denver Broncos. You let Sean Payton go out there and develop his guy, and he could be a very good quarterback for the next couple of years with this team. With the 13th overall pick, I have the Las Vegas Raiders, the division rival of the Denver Broncos, selecting Michael Penix Jr., quarterback from Washington. And I know a lot of people may be scratching their head at this move. They do need offensive line help, yes. But you have Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers. Yes, they have Gardner Minshew, but we've seen in the past, he's not a true starting quarterback from game to game, not for an entire season. You have Aiden O'Connell, but do you really believe that he can be the guy for the next couple of years? And he could be. He looked good for the last two to three games, but early on, he didn't look good. Granted, Josh McDaniels was fired, and they had a lot of turmoil going on with the coaching staff, but Michael Pennis Jr. is too good to pass up, in my opinion. He has a strong arm, is a very accurate quarterback pushing the ball deep down the field, and he can get guys like Devontae Adams open. He can throw wide receivers open. We didn't see much of that from Aiden O'Connell, and Gardner Minshew has done that in the past, but he's also had some very bad games as well. Go out there and get Michael Pennis Jr., and immediately he can be the best quarterback on this roster. And if he doesn't play for majority of the rookie season, you can still stash him away, and he can develop with this team as well. With the 14th overall pick, it's been a lot of news about the New Orleans Saints. Trevor Penning has not been the tackle that they were hoping for. Ryan Ramchick may miss all this upcoming season because of a knee injury. I have them selecting J.C. Latham, tackle from Alabama. You have to get offensive line help to go out there and help out Derek Carr and Alvin Kamara. And the thing is with Derek Carr, he was getting beat up a lot this season. Go back and look at the Green Bay Packers game. Go back and look at the games against the Atlanta Falcons and against the Carolina Panthers. The offensive line was terrible. Go out there and get J.C., Latham and double down and possibly get another tackle in the second round as well if Ryan Ramchick is, is going to miss extended time, which it seems like he will. With the 15th overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts, they were one game away from making the NFL playoffs, and they need secondary help. You selected Anthony Richardson in last year's draft class in the first round. You need cornerback help, and the offense looks very good, and the defense, the front seven is very good as well. Having them selecting Quinion Mitchell, cornerback from Toledo, very fast, Glue corner can play amazing zone and man to me he's the best corner in this draft class and he can stick with some of those top wide receivers in this division as well especially with the Texans trading for Stephon Diggs and also the other pieces going on in this division as well with Calvin Ridley and the Jacksonville Jaguars the Indianapolis Colts have to double down right here and go out there and get some more defensive help and getting Quinion Mitchell helps out with that with the 16th overall pick the Seattle Seahawks they need a Nash rusher Granted, Yuchan Nuosu did miss a lot of time this season dealing with a torn peck. The season before he had nine and a half sacks, him and Daryl Taylor both led the team. But Jared versus on the board. This kid's phenomenal out of Florida State University. He fits the defensive style of Mike McDonald. Go out there, get Jared Verse. He could be a bookend defensive end, and you can have a very good rotation as well. And this is a guy that can switch around across the defensive line. Go out there and get a lot of defensive pressure up front for guys like Brock Purdy, 
Matthew Stafford in this division, and I believe that this could be a tough team to beat moving forward in the next couple of years. They could go quarterback here if Michael Penix Jr. does fall down, but as you see, Michael Penix Jr. just went to the Raiders. You have to go out there, continue to build up that defense because you have a solid offense to play as well. And one thing to take note of with the Seahawks, they have Sam Howell waiting in the wings if Geno Smith does fall off a cliff. So you want to pay attention to that as well. With the 17th overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars have had a very interesting phrase. They have addressed a lot of needs on the offensive end. They went out, they got Mitch Morse at the center position. They also went out there, they signed Gabriel Davis to be the top wide receiver with this team alongside Christian Kirk. They need defensive help still. Granted, you drafted Trayvon Walker a couple of years ago. He's starting to be that very good pass rusher for you. And Josh Allen was phenomenal this season. But it's also a player on this board I'm looking at. Johnny Newton. D tackle from Illinois. You, this man can go out there and eat up double teams and triple teams, and it will open up things for everyone else at the edge rushing spot. He can also go out there and stop the run as well, and he can get to the passer. You're in a tough division with CJ at that quarterback position with the Houston Texans. The Indianapolis Colts, they love to run the football as well. And the Tennessee Titans, Will Levis is a solid quarterback right now. He can continue to get better. The best way to beat these quarterbacks is to continue to put pressure on them and to go out there and stop the run as well. Getting a guy like Johnny Newton will be phenomenal with this team. With the 18th overall pick, the Cincinnati Bengals, they do need offensive line help. You look at Joe Burrow this season. His season was cut short. He was dealing with injuries. He popped his wrist. But this was one of the worst secondaries in the NFL this season. The secondary was terrible, and you just lost to W. Wouzier. But there is a very good cornerback on the board right now. Cooper DeGene, cornerback from Iowa. I think that he can step in. He can be a very good cornerback of the team. He can play some safety. He can play some corner as well, some slot corner. You need versatility in that secondary, and he fits Coach Lou's defensive system as well. So go out there and get a guy that's versatile like Cooper. Has dealt with some injuries over the last couple of months, but he's going to be fully healthy when the season starts, and he's too good to pass up. Look at the two games that they had against the Steelers. Kenny Pickett ate them up in the first game when they went against each other. In the second game, George Pickens single-handedly defeated them. And look at what happened in the Baltimore Ravens games as well. Zay Flowers is out there giving them work. You have to go out there and stop these wide receivers, man. So go out there and get some secondary help. With the 19th overall pick, the Los Angeles Rams, Aaron Donald was still on the roster the last time I made a mock draft, and he's no longer with the team. Now he retired. You have Kobe Turner, who led all rookies in sacks, phenomenal player, but they need an edge rusher. They can go Byron Murphy here, and that would be an ideal fit, but Liatu Latu is too good to pass up, and guess what? He's from UCLA. He's at home, so he doesn't have to travel far. Liatu Latu can go out there, put a lot of pressure on guys like Brock Purdy, Geno Smith, and just other teams in this division as well with the Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray. So go out there and get this edge rusher with Ayatu Latu. You have him and Kobe Turner. And that defense is getting better as well. They just signed Tredavious White and Darius Williams. Look at the Rams to be a tough team to beat moving forward if they can go out there and select Ayatu Latu or Byron Murphy with this pick. I would love to see the Rams have two first round picks in this draft class so they can do that. But unfortunately, they only have one right now as I record this video. With the 20th overall pick, the Steelers went out there and they've had a magical offseason you signed Patrick Queen you went out there and you traded for Justin Fields and you went out there and signed Russell Wilson as well so they're not going to touch a quarterback with this pick but you need offensive line help they cut Mason Cole right now their center that is to, that is scheduled to be the starting center was a backup center last season and that's not the best way to put things Jackson Powers Johnson offensive lineman from Oregon the reason why I say offensive lineman, he can play left guard, right guard. He can play center. A couple of years ago, the Steelers passed on Tyler Linderbaum to go with Kenny Pickett. That was a different general manager. You now have a man, an old Mark Hunt, that's making major moves. They need offensive line help. They can possibly trade up to get Jackson Powers Johnson. And the reason why I say that is because the Miami Dolphins are right behind them. They need offensive line help. But I have them selecting Jackson Powers Johnson with this pick. They're going to want to go out there and run the football behind him with guys like Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. It's too good to pass up with this pick, especially with the 20th overall pick. With the 21st overall pick, the Miami Dolphins have them selecting Troy Foote now. Tackle from Washington State. Tackle from Washington, excuse me. The reason why I have him at tackle, he's played some guard in the past. He played some tackle. Just a very good, versatile offensive lineman. Teron Armstead is not going to play forever with this team. You lost Colonel Williams. You lost some big names at that offensive line spot. 
Troy Foote now can come in and he can be that very good offensive lineman with this team. And I think he can go out there and he's going to go out there and help out Tua Tungvaloa and his offense get even better up front. Because we all know Tua is not the most mobile quarterback in the NFL. And when you put a lot of pressure on him, he's not the same quarterback. Look at what happened against the Kansas City Chiefs, not once, but twice this season. In the offseason and in the regular season. And look at what happened against the Buffalo Bills this season as well. Going out there and getting more offensive line help is always a plus for a quarterback like Tua Tungvaloa. With the 22nd overall pick, I have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Terrian Arnold, cornerback from Alabama. They need secondary help. Darius Slay missed some time this season, but he didn't look the same. Then you also had James Bradbury, who looked completely washed this season with this team. Their secondary was abysmal. You have a brand new defensive coordinator in Vic Fangio, who is known to go out there and develop young cornerbacks. This kid is long, lanky, and athletic. Special mind and zone. Just a very good, smart football player. He's coming over from that Nick Saban tree. I think he'll be a very good cornerback with this team. And this is a team they need to go out there and continue to work on that secondary. Because we saw what happened this season. What happened in the back half of the season against the Dallas Cowboys and against the Washington Commanders. Not once, but twice this season. Sam Howe and Dak Prescott both aired them out as well. And the New York Giants beat them when they faced each other for the second time this season as well. The best way to go out there and prevent that is to go out there and get some more secondary help. With the 23rd overall pick, this is the Los Angeles Chargers pick. Yes, it's the Minnesota Vikings pick, but let's go back a couple of minutes. Remember when I said the Vikings traded up to go get J.J. McCarthy? They traded that other pick and this pick as well to go do that. So I have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Kool-Aid McKintry, cornerback from Alabama. Two cornerbacks from Alabama back-to-back. This team needs secondary help because we saw this season, the cornerbacks of this team were abysmal. They had one of the worst passing defenses in the NFL this season. You no longer have Brandon Staley as your head coach. You now have Coach Harbaugh coming in and changing things. You selected a wide receiver with your first first-round pick. So in the second first-round pick, go out there and get some more secondary help with Kool-Aid McKintree to help out guys like Derwin James, Khalil Mack, and Joy Bosa up front as well. And I think that he could come in, he could be a number one corner with this team immediately. With the 24th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys, they haven't done much this offseason. And Dak Prescott did not sign the contract extension. You also have C.D. Lamb, who's waiting in the wings to get paid. You have Michael Parsons Jr., you lost Leighton Van Der Esch due to retirement, but you bring in Eric Kendrick as well, who's a very good linebacker. They need to get bigger up front. Aaron Jones ran them off the field. It was too many times this season where they got ran over. I have them selecting Byron Murphy, defensive tackle from Texas. Doesn't have to travel far. He was right there playing in Austin, Texas as a UT. Now it's time to just come over to Arlington and be that top defensive tackle this team is looking for. Granted, they did just draft Mozzie Smith. I, I 100% Understand that. But go out there. You have him, Byron Murphy, Demarcus Lawrence, and Michael Parsons. That's a very good athletic defensive line that could go get the quarterback. And most importantly, they can go out there and stop the run. And the Dallas Cowboys should go with a running back in the second round as well. That's just a quick a quick preview for the second round mock draft as well. With the 25th overall pick, have the Green Bay Packers selecting Nate Wiggins, cornerback from Clemson. They need secondary help. Jair Alexander is still with this team. Eric Stokes is with this team. Eric Stokes and Jair Alexander in the past have dealt with injuries. More so Eric Stokes than Jair Alexander. Even if Eric Stokes is able to go out there and play, it would not hurt by getting a guy like Nate Wiggins who can just play all over across the field. Very fast and can come in and fit that brand new system with the Green Bay Packers. We saw what the defense looked like this season. It wasn't the best. You're bringing in a brand new defensive coordinator, but they need to upgrade the talent as well. They shouldn't be touching the office player right here. You did go out there. You cut Aaron Jones. You brought in Josh Jacobs, and you have some top wide receivers as well. Jordan Love can make do with those wide receivers. You can get a wide receiver in the second and third round. Go out there and get a cornerback with this team. And we've seen over the last couple of years, the Packers are allergic to drafting a wide receiver in the first round. With a 26 overall pick at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Ennis Rekershaw Jr., cornerback from Missouri. They had one of the worst passing defenses this season. Yes, you have Jamal Dean. You have some solid cornerbacks back there. You have Antoine Winfield, who's been a phenomenal safety with this team. He fits the Todd Bowles system. Todd Bowles loves to go out there and blitz and put those cornerbacks on one-on-one islands. This kid can fit that. Long, lanky, athletic, and very quick in the hips as well. I think he'll be a very good cornerback with this team. And if it's a system of Todd Bowles, really it's a match made in heaven with this team. With its 27th overall pick, I have the Arizona Cardinals selecting. Talisi Fuaga, 
Tackle from Oregon State. He could play guard. He could play tackle. He could play across the offensive line. This is a dream scenario for the Cardinals. I had them go Marvin Harrison Jr. with the fourth overall pick. You got this first round pick from trading with the Houston Texans in last year's draft class. You have drafted Paris Johnson Jr. You have Kyler Murray and James Conner. You're building up that offensive line. In the next couple of years, if they do this and they follow this blueprint and all these pieces can work out, this could be a tough team to beat. And you're entering Jonathan Gannon's second season as well. You want to go out there and give Kyler Murray the best shot and give him the best shot as well to win football games for the next couple of years. With the 28th overall pick, this is very interesting here. The Buffalo Bills just traded Stephon Diggs. Their top wide receivers right now are Khalil Shakur and they also have Curtis Samuel. They need wide receiving help. I have them going to Donnie Mitchell, wide receiver from Texas. Now, they can go Lad McConkey right here, but a Donnie Mitchell really fits everything that they want. A big body wide receiver that can run deep down the field in those scene routes, can take the top off the defense, and just can get open any given point in time in the game. And he can be a go-to weapon for Josh Allen. We know that Josh Allen loves bigger wide receivers, and he loves bigger targets. That's why the scene went out there and they drafted Dalton Kincaid at the tight end spot in last year's draft class. You will have him, a Donnie Mitchell, James Cook as well, the running back spot. You're building up a very good young offense for the next couple of years in that division. With the 29th overall pick, the Detroit Lions, they love to bite off kneecaps and run people over. They had a tough loss against the San Francisco 49ers before they were able to go to the Super Bowl and possibly win the Super Bowl. With that being said, you did lose Jonah Jackson to the Los Angeles Rams. Go out there and select Cooper BB with this pick. He's a guard, nasty from Kansas State, can play left guard or right guard. He can go out there and continue to help out that run game. We started to get things lost in translation a little bit because you look at the numbers with Jared Goff, look at the numbers with Jameer Gibbs, those guys are phenomenal. And David Montgomery as well. But the offensive line was the biggest key to success with this team. Go out there and continue to build up that offensive line and get those pieces moving as well. They can go an edge rusher here. They can go defensive tackle. But you can do that in the second or third round and you can fill out the rest of the roster as well. You have more picks than just a first round pick. With the 30th overall pick, the Baltimore Ravens, they need wide receiving help. Mark Andrews is a phenomenal tight end. You also had the backup tight end who came in and gave you very good production as well. And you have Zay Flowers. Besides that, you do not have very good receiving options for Lamar Jackson. And now you have a brand new running back in Derrick Henry. Go out there and select Troy Franklin, wide receiver from Oregon. Is a bit of a lighter wide receiver, but he can go out there and take the top off the defense. The one thing that we all know about the Ravens, even when they drafted Bashar Perryman, they love big wide receivers that can get open with speed. Zay Flowers is a shorter wide receiver, but he has some speed. Troy Franklin has a lot of speed, and he was a go-to option for Bo Nix deep down the field. With the 31st overall pick, I had the San Francisco 49ers selecting a Marius Mims tackle from Georgia. You may ask yourself, why are they going tackle here? Did you not see the game in the Super Bowl? Did you not see the 49ers in the back half of the season when they lost against the Baltimore Ravens? The offense line protection was abysmal. You have a franchise quarterback in Brock Purdy. You have key weapons in Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey, and Brandon Ayuk as well. You have all those key weapons. Go out there and build that offensive line and continue to get better and give Brock Purdy a fighting chance moving forward. So just have to go out there and flip his hips and throw the ball at weird directions as well. If that offensive line played better against the Kansas City Chiefs, they possibly would have won that game in the Super Bowl. With the 32nd pick, and this is the last pick in the first round, had the Kansas City Chiefs selecting Keon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State University. Regardless of what Rasheed Rice did, they're going to have to go out there and get a wide receiver regardless because they did not go out there and address that need to the next degree. Yes, you drafted Marquise Hollywood Brown. Well, you went and you picked him up in Frazee. You picked up Marquise Hollywood Brown, but he's known to take the top off the defense, has dealt with drops in the past, and has dealt with injuries. You have Kadarius Toney, who couldn't even catch a cold this season. You hope that Sky Moore can take things to the next level. He hasn't been able to either. And Rasheed Rice... May deal with a suspension because some things that happened off the field with that car accident. Go out there and get Keon Coleman, which is really a steal. Big body wide receiver. You have him and Travis Kelsey, and you can really drown out a guy like Kadarius Toney. Some people believe that Kader Kadarius Toney can get better moving forward. I just don't see it. You go out there, you push him to the wayside. You give Sky Moore another opportunity. If it doesn't work out, you push him to the wayside. You can have Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, Keon Coleman, and Marquise Hollywood Brown as well. If Marquise Hollywood Brown would not have those injuries, those drop issues early on in his career, I'll be more seen for this team to go out there and draft some more defensive help because you did 
trade away Legereus Sneed, but you can get a cornerback in the second or third round. And that defense is so good already with guys like George Karloffis and Chris Jones. Now, this is the last pick in this mock draft. I wanted to give the Carolina Panthers some love. With the 33rd overall pick out of the Carolina Panthers selecting Chop Robinson. Defensive end from Penn State. They can go Peyton Wilson here. I would love to see them go Peyton Wilson, but need more edge rushing help. The reason why I do not have them going Peyton Wilson, you have Josie Jewell with this roster. Very good linebacker with this team. You have him. You have Shaq Thompson. Chop Robinson can be a very good developmental pass rusher with this team, and he'll be playing right behind Jadevian Clowney. You need to go out there and get some immediate production because you no longer have Brian Burns in this team. You traded him away to the New York Giants. And this brings in a very interesting point. They could get Peyton Wilson with that second, second round pick as well. Because the New York Giants don't have a second round pick. They traded to go get Brian Burns. And you also have an extra fifth round pick as well. So guys, let me know how you feel about this mock draft. I know that we went kind of long, but thank you for taking out your time and watching this video. And let me know about any picks that you would go back and change. Grade the mock draft as well from a scale of A through an F. If you're new to the channel, Hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last, Wayne guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys.